Good afternoon. My name is Detlef Lose from University of Twente. I will speak on extended lifetime of respiratory droplets and its implications on airborne disease transmission. This is joint work with Stephen Shong, Shong Shen Hung, Naoki Haori, Morgan Lee, Ray Yang, and Roberto Vesico, whom you all see down here. So in 1919, in reaction to the Spanish flu, Sopa wrote in his famous science article, The Lessons of the Pandemic, there is danger in the air. Today, we know that this danger is due to droplets and aerosols, which are expelled at sneezing, coughing, singing, speaking, or breathing. And here you see wonderful visualizations thereof on a scale of uh, uh, tens of centimeters or several meters. Uh, and these pictures were taken by Lydia Rubia and her co-workers. So the question to be addressed in this talk is, how long is there danger in the air and under what conditions? The classical picture on this is by Wells, developed in the 30s, and uh, his picture is an isolated droplet emission picture. Uh, so uh, he argued that large drops would be mainly ballistic and fly uh, less than six feet, where small drops would uh, quickly evaporate. And this uh, would imply the six feet rule, which is now commonly applied for social distancing. Um, it's based on this evaporation law, the so-called D uh, squared law, that the square of the diameter goes down linearly with time. Uh, and examples are that for a 10 micrometer droplet, the lifetime, according to Wells, is two seconds whereas for a 20 micron droplet, the lifetime is 0.1 seconds. Uh, and this leads to the classical Wells evaporation falling curve, which you see here. So on the horizontal axis, we have the droplet diameter. The trajectories go downwards. The big droplets on the right, they fall on the ground, whereas the small droplets on the left evaporate. And this leads them to the six feet rule. As an example, I show you the 100 micrometer droplet, and this is a lifetime of two seconds. Um, no droplet should exist below this red curve because evaporation would imply a sharp cutoff. But is this really true? So we will address this question, and the method we will use are direct numerical simulations. We will use Lagrangian tracking of every single droplet in space and time and size under extremely well-defined con well conditions, which are possible in numerical simulations. We want to study the effect of the turbulent vapor path and the effect of ambient conditions, namely relative humidity and temperature. So the DNS approach in a nutshell, you use Wisniewski equation. The temperature and density field are fully coupled. The turbulent vapor path as a Reynolds number of about 10 to the 4. We use the Maxley Riley point particle approach. The droplets are two way coupled with respect to mass and temperature. For this coupling, we use the Runs Marshall correlation. The initial droplet size distribution is from various experiments, and we start with 5,000 droplets. Here you see a simulation. Uh, so the droplets are injected from the left. Uh, this background color is the relative humidity. Black is uh, 90, uh, is the background humidity, and um, white and light red is a higher humidity. And what you see is that you have very high local relative humidity, much larger than 90%. And this is due to the humid puff, which is exhaled when speaking or coughing. You also see the droplets, the green ones are the small ones and they stay within the puff, whereas the red ones are the heavy ones and they fall to the ground. So how do these droplets travel? Here you see three types of droplets, 10 micrometer, 100 micrometer, and 1000 micrometer. And you see that the fat droplets fall to the ground. They indeed behave ballistically, whereas the small droplets are trapped in vortices. Yeah. And these vortices, where the 
uh, local relative humidity is very high, protect those droplets from evaporation. So you have strongly delayed evaporation as compared to Wells picture. When we now look in the numbers, how strong is this evaporation delayed? Here we compare the droplet lifetime to the Wells droplet lifetime, and we see that the small droplets at a relative humidity are delayed uh, by a factor of 40 nearly. So they live much, much, much longer. And when you go to a relative humidity of 90%, uh, the delay uh, in, uh, in lifetime is in fact up to 150 times larger as compared uh, to the wealth solution that you see here. Uh, so here I show the droplet lifetime uh, of the small droplets for 10 and 20 micrometer as a function of the relative humidity, we see a very, very strong increase with the relative humidity with a factor up to 200 for the small droplets and the high humidities. Um, so this very high uh, local relative humidity protects the path, which then shields the droplet. Uh, here you can see that indeed, the local relative humidity, which is experienced by the droplets, is much higher than the ambient one. On the left, for a relative ambient humidity of 50%, you see the small droplet experience relative humidities of 70% and more. And in the case of ambient relative humidity of 90%, uh, the small droplet also experience a much, much larger relative humidity. Uh, in fact, you can distribute this in two parts. The small droplets, they are shielded by the moist, hot path, um, whereas the uh, large droplets, they are self-shielding because of the evaporated uh, vapor. Vapor, they evaporate to themselves, but they are ballistic anyhow. Uh, here, the same physics is expressed in terms of shrinking rate. Uh, I compare the shrinking rate um, of the droplet with the wells shrinking rate. And you see the shrinking is way delayed here for um, uh, relative ambient uh, humidity, it's delayed by a, a factor of 50 again. Uh, and uh, for the uh, large relative humidity of 90%, uh, it's delayed by a factor of 100. The larger droplets, in fact, they shrink faster. And the reason is that they fly uh, this is a convective effect. So no boundary layer can build up and they fly and they, in fact, the shrinking rate is, is higher. Yes. Uh, so what we can conclude is that the surrounding fluid, namely the human puff, protects the small droplets from fast evaporation. And how do the absolute evaporation times compare to Wells' classical evaporation falling curve prediction? Here you see uh, this plot by Wells again. Um, and no, uh, evaporate, no droplets should uh, exist in this domain. When we now turn this around by uh, 90 degrees, the droplets are now flying to the right uh, and with time and uh, up here is the ground and those uh, small guys uh, should evaporate. And again, no droplets should exist here. But when we compare this curve now with our numerics, uh, this is shown here, you see that the reality is very different. This is a log scale. You see that many, many small droplets exist where according to Wells, they should not exist. The count here is in fact at the maximum uh, and they exist much, much longer. Uh, the majority in fact uh, exceeds the Wells uh, lifetime. Uh, and when you then translate this time into distance, uh, you get up to 2.4 meters here. Uh, and uh, when um, you then have in fact successive, successive cuff, cuffing, it's much longer. Clearly, the six feet rule does not, uh, uh, is not sufficient. What is the role of the ambient temperature? This is what you see here. Up to now, I showed you ambient temperature of 20 degrees. We now go up to 30 degrees, uh, and you see that at 30 degrees, um, the air can in fact take up a lot of. Uh, moisture uh, and the uh, humid uh, puff, the moisture puff from speaking or coughing is, uh, is vanishing pretty quickly. 
uh, when we, however, go down to low temperatures of 10 degrees, the picture is very different. Now, uh, this uh, moisture path has a much higher coherence and a much longer lifetime, uh, and therefore the little drops are protected for a much longer time, as you can see in this movie here. So, uh, the difference uh, is the coherence of the path, um, and it's much more pronounced uh, for low temperatures. When we now look into the droplet counts, uh, and the size distribution, we get the following picture at two different times, 0 0.6 seconds and 1.2 seconds uh, after the starting of the cuff. And the initial curve is this black curve here. Um, and you see that the droplets for 10 degrees, in the beginning they even grow, they go beyond that. Uh, whereas uh, at high temperatures, they shrink this time. And well, at 1.2, in seconds uh, after start of the cuff, you see the uh, for high temperatures, the small droplets are strongly reduced in number, uh, whereas uh, for 10 degrees, uh, they are still about the same as initially. So why do they so rapidly uh, shrink uh, for high temperatures, but not for low temperatures? Let's have a look at droplets with the size of 50 microns. How do they evolve with time? Uh, at 30 degrees, you see that the D squared law basically holds. Of course, the eff uh, effective diffusivity is uh, much smaller uh, as compared to the prediction of wells, but still it's a linear relation. Uh, however, when we go to 10 degrees, uh, we even observe a growth. So uh, it's initial growth of the droplet uh, rather than shrinkage. And uh, why is this the case? Well, again, when you look around the droplet at uh, the local relative humidity around the droplet, uh, at 30 degrees, it's always smaller than one. However, at 10 degrees, it's much larger than one. Uh, and the reason simply is that warm air can contain more moisture than cold air. And uh, when the uh, warm, uh, humid air out of the mouth is exposed to the cold air outside, you have a situation of oversaturation uh, and you get growth and nucleation of droplets. This is what we see here. Uh, and uh, we know this from daily life, of course. With cold, humid weather, we breathe white smoke simply uh, because warm air uh, can contain more moisture. And when this moisture is released with the warm air, it has to nucleate somewhere and to grow, uh, to grow somewhere. And uh, it takes the droplets from the aerosols as a nuclei and, and grows. So in conclusion, we have seen this is isolated droplet emission picture from wells on which the six feet rule is based, is not hold, and it is dramatically uh, 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 violated. Instead, the multi-phase turbulent cloud emission picture, which Luya Borubia developed over the last years, uh, holds very nicely um, and uh, implies an extension of the lifetime um, by more than 200 for microns, for 10 micron bubbles. The six, rule, six feet rule is clearly insufficient. Um, and uh, the effect is most serious for large relative uh, humidity uh, and for small ambient temperatures. We have worked out the physics and the principles of this with our Lagrangian approach. And uh, there are in fact also consequences of our research for policy makers with respect to mask, with respect to ventilation. Uh, there are however, also many open questions and they are mainly on the medical side. How many viruses are in a drop of a certain size? Are droplet nuclei, so dried out droplets, infectious? If so, how long are they? And how many viruses are required for infection? And where do they have to get to be infectious? All these are questions which we as physicists cannot answer. I show you the two references where we summarize our work. We put it on archive and also MET archive, as you see here. And I end with this slide, uh, be prepared for the cold weather to come.